Hey, Cindy here for Fit Critique. Do you ever feel like there's so much information out there, you don't know who to listen to or what to read? Or sometimes statements are just spoken and not backed up by evidence and you're just expected to accept it? Like, hey, you should only use this lotion from now on instead of this one. How come? Because this one says drawn from nature and it's all natural. So what does that even mean? What does natural mean in this case? And would it be completely different if it said organic or USDA organic? Is it actually better? And why is it better? So some of you might already know, this week we did a review on a CSA. That's a nice little service that delivers locally and organically grown fruits and vegetables right to your doorstep. Get on our blog and check that out. For this video, I wanted to slow the gears down in our heads just a little bit and back it up. I want us to ask why we should or maybe shouldn't buy organic and locally grown products. Now, instead of telling you, organic is the way to go, or nah, it really doesn't matter, I want us to go through all the basic questions and for you to decide all by yourself. So let's ask the obvious. What the heck makes something organic? Doesn't it just mean a living thing capable of life? Why would it need a sticker or a seal that says certified organic as a proof of life? Well, apparently when it comes to food, organic doesn't just mean living. It is life raised under a set of very strict federal laws and regulations. Let's explore why this box of miso can have a label dubbing it USDA organic. I dub the organic. While my very fresh looking bok choy can only be considered natural. All right, number one. Organic products must be grown on natural soil that has not been modified. So this means the soil does not contain any petroleum-based fertilizers or any fillers. That means no volcanic glass, no expandable clay, and that this organic soil is great for the environment because it is naturally capable of moisture retention as well as proper drainage of excess water. It is unlike conventional soil. Organic soil provides an abundance of important vitamins and minerals to any plants grown in it. This includes the highly coveted vitamin B12, the same B12 that many people believe can only be derived from animal proteins. Number two, organic farmers cannot use any genetically modified seeds or bioengineered products. Yes, that is what the very well-known behemoth of a big pesticide company turned genetically modified seeds producer has been able to create by consulting with Nobel Prize winning geneticists. Genetic alterations have already proven grave for our future. Many of the worms and pests our genetically altered crops were designed to resist have already completely evolved within the last 15 years and have been able to wipe out entire fields. The U.S. has been the leading cultivator of genetically modified organisms since their creation. We are now realizing their devastating effects and to date, 27 countries have banned GMOs. But the U.S. looks unlikely to follow suit. Number three. Organic farmers cannot use any synthetic fertilizers. Okay, okay. Let's spend just a little bit of time to clarify this one a little bit. Many of us mistakenly believe that organic farmers are prohibited from using fertilizers and chemicals and pesticides of any kind. 
This is actually inaccurate information. Organic farmers are in fact allowed to use any chemicals they choose as long as they are not synthetically produced. One of the main reasons why this regulation was set in place was because scientists have found carcinogens in synthetically manufactured pesticides. And living creatures who consume plants treated with these pesticides accumulated in their bodies. I'm not saying naturally derived pesticides organic farmers are allowed to use contain no carcinogens here. In fact, they do. So some organic farmers choose not to use any pesticides whatsoever. Instead, they opt to use insect traps. But the point here is that organic farmers are indeed allowed to use chemicals as long as they are not synthetically derived. And lastly, number four. For any meat to be certified organic, the livestock it came from must not be given growth hormones, antibiotics, here comes that graphic image, and no animal byproducts. With all that said, do you think it's worth the extra dollar or two per pound for this organic produce? What would you buy it for? Would you do it for the antioxidants, the extra vitamins, the freshness? Or is it to support the local farmers and growers? Or do you think it doesn't matter? I will leave it up to you to ponder and decide for yourself. <laughs>